Yo, you guys, this is Blacklist of the Abyss, and you're watching my review for World Trigger Chapter 91. Alright, and it's been a busy week, so I've been kind of late on a lot of things. Um, but things will be put up in the next 24 hours, or 36 hours, I'll say, because I'm going to be pumping stuff out now that I've, I'm done with work for a short period of time. Um, but yeah, this is my review for World Trigger Chapter 91. Um, last last time we left off with Yuma in a bit of danger, but he ends up being saved by Chica. Right? She provides uh, cover for him by shooting, and it allows him to get away from Hisato and then go and take out Hisato. All right. um, what they were expecting was Arafune to take advantage of the situation to actually get rid of Chica. Because of that huge blast she sent, he, actually, he was very easily able to figure out where she was. And he found her in terms of, he actually, like, in terms of aiming, he actually found her relatively quickly, faster than I thought he would. You know, he knew the general direction, but he still had to, like, you know, point and, you know, aim and all that. Which, you know, looking through a scope, it's, you know, not exactly easy to pinpoint the person's location, even if you know their general location. So, uh, that was impressive by him to take her out and call me off guard, because I didn't, I didn't think that Chica, of all people, would be taken out. Osamu maybe, but Chica, you know, that's, that caught me off guard. Um, I found myself almost reacting the same way Usami did <laughs> after the end of the match. Like, wondering, like, oh my god, is she okay? Because, you know, she, because she's so small, it makes you, it, you forget that she's only a year younger than Osamu. So because of her size, you end up thinking of her as a little girl compared to Osamu. And, well, Yuma's pretty small too, but he's so OP and just like experienced and all that. You don't worry about him as much. But you know, I <laughs> I, I I didn't react as much as Usami did. But I was, I was you know I was still interested in figuring out if she was alright since it was her first experience bailing out. You know, so <laughs> that's that. Um, but after all of the shots were fired, uh, Sua tried to take out Yuma. However, Osamu took him out before Sua had a chance to fire at Yuma. Um, he, he, Osamu actually ended up hitting Yuma as well, but he was able to block it with the shield because he saw it coming. They actually used Yuma as bait to take Sua's attention away from Osamu uh, to allow that uh, hit to take place. Um, after that, the only one left was Arafune, but he was leaking out so much try on that they didn't even have to attack him again for him to bail out. Alright, so, um, uh, but, uh, Mikuma squad still gets the points, though, because the injury that called, that caused him to leak all that try on out was caused by Yuma. Alright, Yuma's the one who dealt that initial injury, so they still got the points. And, Mikuma squad ends up winning, so, yeah. Um, Azuma and Kodera, after the victory, they went and explained why it is that Tamakoma was able to have the success, um, and the, the the main reason why they restate the reasons for uh, Osamu and their victory is because the next match that they have is against Nasu Squad and Suzunari Squad, and unlike this round, they won't have the advantage of choosing terrain, and that was the basis of all of their other advantages, that was the basis of their strategy, and that's what allowed them to win. They chose terrain, that allowed them to control the movements of Arafune's squad and Sua's squad, and it's because they controlled the movements of those two squads that they were able to capitalize on them. But now that they don't have the option of controlling terrain, it's going to be flipped. So now the other teams, the other team is going to choose terrain that will negatively affect them, right? especially since they've essentially had nothing but success so far, so teams are going to be watching out for them. They're actually considered a big threat right now. They don't have nearly as much data on them and all that, so it's their the next round is I I really like the way this was done, all right, because Nasu Squad and Susan I Squad are not as good as Yuma and Osami and Chika are together, so them facing these teams that are perceived as better than them, but now having to face a team that's perceived as worse than them, going into that, you know, we probably wouldn't be nearly as excited, especially since it doesn't include people like Sua, who we already knew. Oh, actually, I think we do. I think we have seen some of these guys before, actually, now that I think about it, but they're, 
you know, fodder. <laughs> Who cares about that? All right. But the point is, we're not excited about this upcoming match as we were this current one that just ended. But because of the fact that of some of them are going into this match with a disadvantage, it actually makes us look forward to seeing what it is that's going to be done to them and how it is they're going to overcome it. All right, so it's still going to be really challenging for them, and because of that, it, it's just going to make the next the next round more more interesting. And because of that, I'll give this chapter a seven out of ten. I thought it was enjoyable. I thought it was cool. Um, the match ended, and it was enjoyable the way Osamu stood there and he took out Sua. Um, plus the execution of uh, the rest of the chapter in terms of making us look forward to the next match, despite the fact that it features people who we don't care as much about and people who are just not as good. <laughs> so I, I really like the way that was done, so I'll give it chapter 7 out of 10. And that's that, you guys. Rate, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.